he came to the trailer that we lived in and, you know, he sat down and he talked to me and my mom. And so, you know, he comes in and he, you know, he sits down, crosses his legs, you know, Nick Saban. Yeah. <laughs> and um, my mom's just sitting there and like, she's just smiling, right? And I'm did sitting she, there. Did she know who he was? Yeah. So yeah. Like, this, this is it's, it's crazy. So I'm sitting down, I'm looking at my mom like, why are you smiling? Like, he, like <laughs> he's, he's straight face. You know what I mean? Like, he's like locked in and she's just smiling. I'm like, what's going on? And the first thing my mom says is, you don't remember me, do you? I'm like, What's up guys, welcome back to Lobster and Beer TV, coming to you live from Demon Records in Old Town Scottsdale. This week we got a really special one for you guys. We've got Alabama superstar and NFL running back, Eddie Lacy. Lacy. Don't forget to check out the new merch line, lobsterandbeer.com, link in the description. As always, a portion of the proceeds goes to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And it's also have... gonna be to get Brian a new Barbie because he's been wanting one really bad. Man, it was a good movie. But yo, as always, shout out, get Main Lobster for the fresh rolls, and Big Al, let's, let's eat, baby. baby. All right, Big Al, we rolling? Yeah. Let's go. Hot yo. in the kitchen. Hot and ready, baby. We got the, uh, the, Eddie, the Eddie Lacy roll right here, baby. The Eddie Lacy roll. Yes, sir. Have you had lobster before? Lobster, of course. Yeah? yeah. Oh, f*** yeah, man. We, uh... Have you had a lobster roll before? Not a lobster roll. Fucking... Uh, a lobster tail. Yeah, it's a little more classy. Lo lo <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's more classy. Lobster roll though is better, bro. It's uh, like a sandwich on on uh, thirteen steroids. If they can see what I'm seeing right now. Oh, whew. yeah. I mean, you gotta hit it with a little. We got so your your special ingredient was potato chips, jalapeno chips. Jalapeno. Yeah, I, I went with jalapeno. You said chips. I was uh, like, yeah. I want to go jalapeno. And then that's the special one, though, right there, man, the, the Louisiana hot sauce. <laughs> straight, straight, straight from where I'm from. Where, where are you from sauce. exactly yeah, in I'm Louisiana? From so I'm from Gretna, Louisiana. Uh, yeah. Most people don't know where that's at, but it's literally, uh, it's located uh, across the river uh, from New Orleans, Louisiana. So it's oh, okay. about a 20-minute drive. They're separate. Oh, okay. I got yeah. you. Uh, super close. Yeah. Yeah, not too far at all. Did you do crawfish boils back then? 100 percent that's yeah. how you grew up you learn how to eat crawfish by the time you're two years old yeah, i feel like that's <laughs> you a know staple how to peel movie. it and all that by two years old before you can walk you can For eat really? crawfish. Yeah. <laughs> i've only the one time i've been to louisiana we did a crawfish boil well you yeah. know it's crazy uh so i found a place that uh ships crawfish out from louisiana to here oh for real when i first came out here i tried what was it I tried the angry crabs and the hot and juicies, and I'm like, nah, this is yeah. not like Louisiana yeah. at all. Like, what is this bag of juice and shit in this, you know, in the crawfish? So uh, I found a place in Louisiana. So I would ship them out like 30 pounds at a time and just like Ooh. keep it in my freezer. And like, <laughs> me and my friends would just eat it all day, every day. Mm. And saying that to say this, there's a high possibility that Sunday I might have some getting flown in. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. Nah, just throwing it out there. It's a high possibility. Fresh batch. <laughs> I feel like, too, oh, it doesn't that. taste as good out here because, again, part of it is the vibe of just the ambiance of you're, you're with all the people on the block. You just throw it on the table. Everyone's around. I mean, it's, that's that. Yeah, I mean, it's that. You, like, you have to have a table like this damn big. Yeah. These things are huge, bro. I see this guy on TikTok all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> he makes, like, the biggest crawfish bowls. Yeah. They look fire. When you, when you, you, when you do them, do you add seasoning like while they're cooking? Or do you add it after, or do you eat them just? So, well, you, you gotta dip start them with in like sauce? your real, right? No, so you basically you like you boil it, like you make it, you make your seasoning stuff right, like you boiling it, the water you boiling in. Mm -hmm. uh, you let your seasoning stuff like like basically soak into it, right? Okay. Then you add the live crawfish to it. So when you add the live crawfish to it, you're gonna leave that in there for like a few hours, and then once it's done, you turn the fire down. Yeah. And you just let it sit. 
and everything that you put, like all all the whole juice part, like the part in hot and juicy that they just put in the bag. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff is with the crawfish is sitting and boiling, just like soaking it up, soaking it up, soaking it up. Uh. So then when you when you pour it out on the table, you see the, when they pour it on the table. All that seasoning is inside the crawfish versus like Damn, it being fun. hot and juicy where they just throw the crawfish inside the juice and yeah, it has yeah. no taste. But everything soaks inside the crawfish and it's amazing. Do you have a special, do you have a, like a, a special, se- like do you have a recipe though that you use specifically? Well, see, I don't cook, so okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I can't. <laughs> so, you don't. When they, so when they ship it to you, does it come already, mm-hmm. already yep. cooked? You just and have to heat it up or something? Yep, it oh. comes frozen. And all you do is steam it, and it comes oh. right. It, it tastes as almost you just made it right then and there. That's mm. dope. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, I well, mean, shit. that's. Yeah, I was going to say, we're talking about all this food. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's similar to this, because obviously this is Maine lobster. You can't get it anywhere else but Maine. Mm-hmm. And our homie Mark, Get Maine Lobster, they literally, they package it at the dock where they bring it in, and then they send it, and it comes overnight in a box, and you can get fresh lobster, man, like this. Jeez. So let's crush it. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, let me, let me go and taste with let's this. Get this something out. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yep. Yes. That's doing sure. Sure. Those That's chips cool. are perfect. That's right fire. on top. That's fire. The Eddie Lacy roll. Yes, sir. I'm gonna have to start selling these. That taste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to start selling these. That tastes like the South. Yeah, this one's moving up my ranks already. Yeah. I already passed yours. Man, this might be better than sweet. last week's. Oh, for sure. So They're hating on me. Bad, They're hating on me. I mean, <laughs> last week, last week we had our first ever boys only pub, mm-hmm. and we we first time we never had a guest because we always had the guests add the, the the ingredients, and so I was like, oh, I'm gonna make my own my own roll. It was good. And, and they gave me love at first, but now they're throwing me under the bus. It was good, but I, honestly, I respect that. I this is <laughs> it was better, bro. It was better, bro. I'll give it. I'll give it to Eddie. The chips oh, is different. I'll take them on the field, but he beats me in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right now, you probably got that. The last thing I'm trying to do is get hit. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you've been hit enough, I'm sure. You've been hit. Enough for a lifetime. <laughs> Jeez, enough bro. Enough for bet. a lifetime. I bet. Well, yo, man, I want to dive in, man. I'm, I'm so grateful to have you here, bro. I'm so grateful that we met. Yeah, shout, brought- out, shout out Vinny. Yeah, shout, shout out, out Vinny, Vinny from Bottle Blonde. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. That's facts. who introduced us, man. That's facts. why I rock. This is a, Vinny gave me this shirt from if Bottle. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. And uh, yeah, man, he introduced us a couple months ago, man. We just became homies. Um, you know my brother as well. Mm-hmm. The better brother is what everyone <laughs> calls him. Way better. Yeah. yeah way better. Way better. <laughs> you're my best friend. You're, you're one of the only people that's not supposed to say that. No, right. <laughs> let's be real. I mean, then facts are facts, though. Facts okay. are facts. I mean, let's be honest. Respect. <laughs> Respect. But yeah, man, dude, uh, Vinny introduced us, man. We've, we've kicked it a few times, but I've never, like, dove into your story before. So I'm super hyped to actually, like, I want to take it back to, like, when you were a kid, man. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you grew up in, in Louisiana. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yep, two older brothers and a younger sister. Yeah, how old were the age differences? Uh, my oldest brother is 39. My middle brother, 37. 36, 30, 37. I'm 33. Okay. My younger sister is 30. Okay, got you. So one one of four, man. Perfectly spaced out, too, almost. Yeah, yeah almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a mistake. So, you know, JT's 10 years older than me. Then Join our the other club. brother, who's between <laughs> us, is eight years older than me. And then you. And then me, yeah. yeah I thought I was going to be the last child, and then uh, somehow my sister was born. Yeah, and that makes it even harder, too, because then the three boys, and there's one girl, one girl's a princess, I'm oh. sure. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, she, she, she having three older brothers, she, she had her rough. She, yeah, she had, she had <laughs> a rough for sure. She can hold her own. That's but sure. she definitely got all of us in trouble whenever she wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> so she got us back. Maybe what was like? Now. What was what was growing up like? Did where where'd you guys live? Like, were you were you close with your your siblings? So yeah, we're all close. Um yeah. we're all super super close. Uh, grew up together. Uh, the only difference is like we my because my brothers are older. I didn't. I wasn't old enough to like play with them. Mm-hmm. Like even when I was 12, 13 years old, able to go play basketball and they play basketball. Yeah, I can't play with him and his friends because I'm the little brother. Yeah, so, it's too you know, too small. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, tight knit family did pretty much everything together. Uh, 
all the boys are mama's boys, sister, daddy's I love girl. That. You know, yeah. uh, so yeah, pretty typical family. Uh, get beat up by your big brothers. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Uh, did, they, <laughs> did you guys get rowdy sometimes? Yeah, get beat up yeah. by the big brothers. Get made fun of. You know, like the whole nine. Uh, did your older brothers play ball? Uh, my oldest brother played football. Yeah, he made it um, to LSU. Actually, oh, he oh for real? For LSU for one year. I want to say it was two. Team. What year was it? Oh shit. But he played whenever LSU won the Sugar Bowl when they had Nick Saban as their coach. Oh, okay. And so Nick Saban was his coach as well. Yeah. Um, my middle brother played basketball. He played basketball and football, but he uh, it kind of stopped after high school. Yeah. Then me and my sister played. My sister played basketball and volleyball, and she did track until after college. Oh, dope. Is that something you got in? Did you get into sports at a young age? Oh, yeah. I started playing uh, – Mostly because of my friends. Like, me and my friends did everything together. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was more so for the fun of it, not because of, you know, we want to be... Whoever, you weren't, you like weren't thinking cool. of the future. Yeah, we yeah. just playing. Like, we going to the playground with a football. Like, let's do this. Or playing tag, playing basketball, baseball, you know, whatever it is yeah. we did as a group. And that's how I got introduced to football. You still keep in contact with any of those friends? Uh, via social media, yeah. yeah. Uh, I still have some of their numbers, but we just talk here and there. If, yeah. we're, if whenever I'm in town, uh, I'll see if they're free or they'll like hit me up. Like, I see you coming in town, and like we'll get together, have a night out, and see if we remember the next day. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we know you love your nights out. Oh, <laughs> when, when, did it, when did it hit you that there was actually a potential like future for you with football? Or were you always, like, when you were younger, were you better than most of your friends at sports and stuff? Uh, actually, not really. Like, I was, like, I was, like, up there, but yeah. there were a lot of guys who were better than uh, I was. But the thing that separated us was they were more into, like, what was going on outside of the sport. Out, mm. like, in the neighborhood. You know, they, they, they're outside. Yeah. Me, um, let's play, have fun, street lights on, I got to be inside, mom's not having that, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think that was, like, the biggest difference between me and the guys who were better than I was. Um, but as far as when did I think it would be a future, I kind of took things, like, year by year because um, after the hurricane, like, everything was, like, sketchy. Like, nothing was stable. So the only stability I had was football. And at the time, I was like, well, you know, I'm in ninth grade right now. You know, I don't know how far this is going to go. So I'm going to just play until my senior year. And then now I have to figure out reality. But come the senior year, like, I did good enough to be able to go to college. And it was like, oh, well, I have another four years to play, like, what I like to play. And it kind of just went like that. Everything was just year by year. When did, was, you, st when did you start Jinx. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, when did you start uh, like getting, you know, being recognized that you had the potential to go to the next level or getting offers and things like that or talking to coaches? I would say 10th grade, 11th grade for sure. Um, Were you playing running back then? Yeah. That's the okay. only position I played. Ever? Yeah. yeah. I try to play defense. Tackling is not for me. Uh, <laughs> no matter how big I got, it seems run, as though I just through. can't hit the other person. Fair enough. And it's a lot easier to run away from them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I had or a lot of experience with that. Yeah. Yeah. The brothers, oh, yeah. I'm good at running away from people, for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, 10th grade, 11th grade, for sure, is when I uh, noticed that I can, you know, uh, be able to play at the next level. So what was it like getting recruited by Alabama? Uh, the whole recruitment process is super cool. Um, you go to these different universities. They get, like, the top players in your position and, like, show you around. You, uh, you get to meet the coaching staff. Uh, you tour campus, which is the coolest part ever, because then you get to, like, see what it's That's like. Dope. From, you know, you, I mean, what, I'm a senior in high school. I'm walking around looking at college girls. I'm like, That's man, I can't, yeah. wait. I can't wait to go back to school and tell her, hey, man, I see, man, this girl, she was from X, Y, and Z. I never saw a girl from New Jersey before. Like, you know, it's, like it's the smallest things yeah. ever, but it's like. Had you, had you before you started touring schools, had you been, like, around been the country? anywhere. So this is your first time. What, what school did you go to first? Uh, the first school I went to was Alabama. It was Bama? Mm -hmm. really? That was the first one you toured? Yep. Alabama, Damn. Tennessee. Alabama and Tennessee. 
I really want to say I went to LSU, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. You didn't? No. I don't think I did. Yeah. When, but, so when they, they you, you go to Alabama, you have no idea what to expect. Is it the first time leaving Louisiana? First time like, leaving Louisiana. Walk me through what that experience was like. So you don't know what to expect. Um, I'm a mama's boy, so like part of me is like, I have to be on my best behavior. I have to be kind of—I don't want to say like a square, but you know, like yeah. I don't want to—I don't want to feel like I am naive, if yeah. that makes sense. So oh, it's yeah. kind of like, like I want to enjoy myself, but I have to be guarded, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And then you get around these college kids who are touring a high school kid, and they showing you exactly who they are, and you are like, am I supposed to fall into this, or am I supposed <laughs> to stay reserved? You like, you have no idea. Because you don't want to, like, pretend or act and overact. And they'd be like, yo, this dude tripping. Yeah. But then you don't want to be too, like, laid back to it. they like, uh, you know, I don't think we did a good enough job to, like, get him to want to come here. So it's kind of, yeah. like, hit or miss. But I think just being able to, like, tour and, like, just see like see the universities. Because, like, the universities are huge. Like, it's like it's insane. Bama's it's beautiful, It's like, too, in man. order to go to this yeah. class, I have to take a bus from here to here? <laughs> like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like... It's just it's, it's something you can't really put in words, but um, the the experiences, the things you get to see, the people you get to talk to. Do they give um, you like special treatment? Like like and what's were they, like and, like well, because they were recruiting you. Mm-hmm. So like I mean, you watch like something you know like uh, that show Ballers on HBO that, that, that was from a couple I've years back. It. I've, I've yeah, never watched it but it's like I, I watched something like that where they're 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 showing so much like they there's an athlete that they want. And they bring him to campus, and they're like, "Yo, we 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 need to f- convince this guy to come to this school." Like, did did they give like show you extra love to help mm. convince you to come there? I don't think so. No. But what I do think is because I I, I stated myself honestly, like I'm not a person who like if I go there, I don't want to try to figure out what you do to get X, Y, and Z. No, 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 no. I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, like generally speaking, yeah. So like I like I just kind of tailor to myself and like if it's not like not about me in a selfish way but like if it has nothing like to do with what I'm trying to do or what I have going on then it's like out of sight out of mind. But I think that like whatever like that player is into because they they research you they figure out who you are like what you like what you about all that before they even like allow you to like come toward a campus because they don't want to waste their time you know yeah. And one thing I do like is video games and. So the guys that they uh, connected me with, usually you're in your position group. So you're a running back, they'll let you hang out with a running back. But I was with um, I was with a DB uh, named Robbie Green, and it's partially because he was from Louisiana too. Okay, yeah. But he was in the video games, and most of the guys weren't in the video games. So when I hung out with him, and like he showed me around, and after we were just hanging out, uh, he turned on a PlayStation. I'm like, oh. PlayStation, like now we talking, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It was cool going walking around and see stuff, but like now we're in video games. This my like this my world. Yeah, so, that was it was something you could so connect they, with. So like, they find yeah. something that you know that person is interested in, and then they try to work it that way. Yeah, that makes sense. That Which, makes sense. I mean, now they just got a whole bunch of money, so now you can just do whatever you want. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, why that have to think, be after my time? I said that. <laughs> like, y'all don't wait till I'm going to start giving out millions of dollars before going to the NFL. I, I honestly think you could probably go back and get some because I think you're the reason, especially why Al- <laughs> why Alabama's giving out money now, bro. I'm like, like you brought them three natties. Like, so just let's, just, let's be just look out for me one time, man. I ain't gonna tell nobody. Just look Real. Out. Yeah, we'll yeah. make some. We'll make some Send calls. Nick Saban we'll, that nice we'll, invoice. Yeah. Figure it out. Did Did you meet Saban? When you went to visit? Uh, I actually met him before visiting um, because him and a position coach, uh, Burton Burns at the time, uh, they came to the high school. And, oh, for uh, real? Yeah, so um, this is a funny story. Uh, he came to the trailer that we lived in, and, you know, he sat down and he talked to me and my mom. And so, you know, he comes in and he, you know, he sits down, crosses his legs, you know, Nick Saban. Yeah. And um, my mom's just sitting there and like, she's just smiling, right? And I'm did sitting she, there. Did she know who he was? Yeah. So yeah. Like, this, this is, it's, it's crazy. So I'm sitting down. I'm looking at my mom like, why are you smiling? Like, he, like <laughs> he's, he's straight face. You know what I mean? Like, he's like locked in and she's just smiling. I'm like, what's going on? And the first thing my mom says is. You don't remember me, do you? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what you, like, what you mean? He don't remember you? Like, what's oh, going no. on? So, like, I'm, I'm intrigued, and he's like, he's puzzled for the first time. I've never seen him puzzled before, and so uh, because he recruited my oldest brother, and so oh, during okay. that okay. process, like, my mom, um, 
he, my mom didn't have anything to do with that process because my brother's dad at the time, like pretty much just spearheaded it. And it was like, he just, he just took like, f- like forefront of it. Yeah. But my mom remember seeing him. And so like fast forward, like hell years. And then now it was my turn getting recruited and he's right back and it's still my, and it's my mom, you know? And I was like, <laughs> wow, full circle. Like, like you get That's to meet so Nick funny. Saban twice. <laughs> but yeah, she was like, you don't remember me, huh? I'm like, whoa. She, she pulled the flex on him. Yeah. She said, yeah. Like, Sheesh. She said you might be top dog, but you ain't. So he should, did he come to like one of your games and then he, he I don't think he actually came to a game, but there were recruiters that they would have to like sit down and like watch the games that you don't know who they are. Yeah. And honestly I had no idea that they were there, but one day I so I got on the internet. No, somebody gave me a DVD of um my junior year highlights, and I'm like, what is this? And then they told, they was like, just Google your name on the internet. And then that was my first time ever Googling myself. And then there's a highlight tape there. And then that's how they were able to find me. Somebody, that's some crazy, random person man. made a random so highlight like, tape. So your family, you, no one was like, yo, let's pursue going to college. Like, like you're a great player. Like, like let's run this. It was someone else in the community because you were just doing it because you loved it. Mm-hmm. That's wild, man. That's so yep. cool. Do you, do you know who made that tape? Not to this day. We Damn. should find them. Yeah, we should. If somehow you can figure out who that was, that'll be dope because I promise I have no clue. That's incredible, man. Yeah, Nobody knows who did it. Let's yeah, find, we should let's find that's them. like social yeah. media. Right, right we should the find them, too. fly them out, and then bring them on the pod and have a conversation. <laughs> no, that, that'd yeah. be awesome. But disclaimer, I really don't remember much from high school. <laughs> I just put it out there. I don't remember much. I mean, I, I honestly don't either. <laughs> uh, what made you choose Bama over Tennessee? Um, so after Hurricane Katrina... Uh, we bounced around a lot. I was 15 years old. Uh, my sister was 13, 12, 13 years old. And uh, we were pretty much displaced. So we like bounced around. around so was your around. home destroyed in Katrina? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, up to like five, six feet, I think it was. Damn. Yeah, so uh, we bounced around from like family member to family member. You know, like we didn't have nowhere to stay. And we had this new high school, huge high school. You know, it looks like a college, you know, for like a high school level. And all of the kids are like looking at me and people like me who are there because of a storm with like nowhere to live. Like you can just tell like they're looking at you different. Like for one, yeah. you don't belong here. You don't look like you belong here. And you don't have nowhere to stay. We're 15. It hurts a lot, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. So um, we actually ended up for two years living with... Uh, with uh, this family who allowed me, my mom, and my sister, me, my mom, my dad, and my sister to live with them until my parents could find a job. So uh, it's a whole bunch of, like, things that was, like, going on that, like, uh, internally hurt. But all I did was play football and try to put it in the past. But I always told myself, like, if there was any way um, that I was able to leave Louisiana but be close enough to, like, still be able to visit my parents somehow, uh, then okay. that's going to be – that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. And so when I was able to go to college, um, it was – the two closest schools was Alabama and Tennessee. Alabama, four, four and a half hours, Tennessee, eight, driving. Yeah. And so both of those were my two go-to schools because they was out of Louisiana, but they was close enough to be able to see my parents. And yeah. My mom was stuck on Alabama the whole way, just For Alabama, real? Alabama, because she likes Nick Saban play. because of oh, uh, Sab- yeah, because of how strict he is. That's what I was saying. Sounds like you he her and your mom are similar. That yeah, they, they run exactly. a tight, they run a tight <laughs> ship. Exactly, yeah. like they they run a tight, and that's what <laughs> and my mom. Though. My mom knows how I am. Like I'm pretty, you know, I'm loose. I'm easy going. Like I'm easily distracted. Yeah, you know, yeah. I won't do the wrong stuff, but if I have a choice, nine times out of ten, you know. But um, so I picked Bama. Even though I wanted to go to Tennessee because I knew people there, so I felt more comfortable there. Mm-hmm. But um, at the end of the day, I picked Bama because it was closer, and my mom really wanted me to be there. And then it turns out that uh, they had a hell of a f- football team with years on out after that. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's uh, needless to say you made the right choice, dude. Yeah. A little bit. So then you go to college, though. You go to Bama, one of the most elite schools in the country. And did the pressure start to hit you where it wasn't just playing? Because... No, yeah, what was the college you, experience like? Yeah, like did you you had scholarship there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. you had you had scholarship, so your school is riding everything on is, that. Everything is solid. all of a sudden it goes from playing in high school, having fun, to playing in college. Did was there any and weight from that, or were you just still just like yo, 
I'm the, having a good time. My first year and a half was hell. For real? Yeah, because I, so I never worked out a day in my life until I got to college. <laughs> That's crazy. Right? Really? Bro, no lie. I never worked out. How many, do you know how I many touchdowns you had in high school? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing like outrageous, but like a lot, you know, <laughs> for that point in time. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, shit. <laughs> like, I, I, I did a bunch of stuff at that point in time. Because the school, when I got there, the school was only like four or five years old. So they was getting beat a lot. You know, they would make it kind of far, but they was getting beat a lot. Yeah. How many kids were at the high school? Oh, man. Uh, we'll probably have to Google it, but it's a lot. It's okay. like it's a huge ass high school. Yeah, yeah. Sir. it literally looks like a like I know I never been to like a like a community college or like a JUCO college, but it looks like it could be like a nice class. Oh, one for of those. Yes. Yeah, yeah, huge yeah. school. Yeah. Like the school is in the front, in the back of the school is two fo- two practice fields, then the football stadium, then a baseball stadium because baseball is just as good as football at that school. Okay. Yeah, and it's like it, it's. It's, it's crazy. Was it a big stadium they had a, too? They had, yeah. yeah. Huge I mean, yeah, the South don't yeah. f- around with football. Like they, had, they, had <laughs> a, they had, they had, they had a, uh, a, they have a parking lot. But back then, I thought it was like I didn't know kids in high school drove to school. By the way, yeah. until I went there, we we took the bus. That's all we know. Bus drop off, bus get back to the crib. But we there's a there's a whole huge lot, one like one lot for the teachers, the rest for the students, and it's like. Like y'all, y'all got cars. <laughs> like, y'all, y'all people got y'all cars right now. Like it's man, that that school was an eye opening before eye openings. Do you think being at how, that school though help prepare you for how what the the different people you'll see oh, in, in nah, Alabama and stuff? No, no, nah, that school. The only thing that it prepared me to was to get out of there. It motivated you to get? Out. Yeah, I just needed to get out. So yeah, you go to Bama. What was that transition period like from where you were coming from to now going to university? Scholarships, everybody there has like family money, stuff like that. Was that like a hard transition for you or was it pretty pretty smooth? Mm. Outside of football, everything was pretty smooth. I mean, all I did was stay to myself. Yeah, that's right. But uh football wise, like oh, like I was saying earlier. Yeah. I, I haven't worked I never worked out before. So then <laughs> yeah, I did. Exactly. and then I, I went to summer school, so then all the freshmen coming in you know, they already have a head start. Yeah. And so I get there. I finally get there. I, I get cleared by the NCAA clearinghouse. I'm on campus. They just throw you right in. Like, there's no warm-ups to this or nothing. Like, you just go right into the fire. <laughs> Man, I tried to quit twice. All right? <laughs> two, on two different occasions, I tried to quit. I'm like, I'm like, we're the same age. Me and this dude the same age. Why is he squatting damn near 400 <laughs> pounds and bench pressing damn near 300 and I can't do none of this. I'm barely in the hundred. I, we the we the same age. Like how is like how is this possible? Uh, like we were running, doing conditioning. I'm tired. Like how uh, like how is everybody else still like everything was just like it was all new. Like my body couldn't take it, and yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I don't think this is for me. And like I told uh, strength conditioning coach at the time, I was like, I don't think this is for me. Like I like I can't do it. I can't keep up. And yeah. like it was like a mind thing. And he talked me in the stand, and he's like. He's like, just trust me. Uh, in a year's time, like you're gonna be bigger, stronger, faster, blah blah blah. And I'm like, in a year's time, you know how long a year is? <laughs> like, I'm still hurt from when I first got here, and this is four weeks later. You talking about a year? Like, no. And so, uh, but like, I mean, I stuck with it, and I mean, he didn't lie. Like, everything just yeah. picked up. And it's almost as if it became like second nature, and I literally just got bigger, stronger, and faster. Yeah. And uh, like that, that part of my collegiate career was literally the hardest. Going from yeah. not doing anything to like it's basically going like zero to a hundred. Like it's it's literally that. Did like you start? Do you start your first oh, year? Your no, no, no. I no. redshirted. Oh, I'm sorry, did you play? Oh, you redshirted. First yeah, year. I redshirted okay. first yeah. year. Oh, do you know how many running backs we had? Oh yeah. No, Let's damn. talk about that. Who my was there? First, my rookie year, we had Roy Upchurch. Um, Roy Upchurch, um, oh, what's his name? Terry, Terry, uh, Terry Grant, Demetrius Gould, Mark Ingram, <laughs> Trent Richardson, you and know. me. So there was no good running backs there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was like, like, I, and I literally, I like, <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you didn't quit, bro. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what am I'm I doing? I'm yeah. looking at him like, what am I doing? 
That's it's incredible. Like dog after dog after dog. <laughs> yeah. Me and this dog just came in together, so we, I'm going to have to battle with this dude every year. And it's like, why didn't I go somewhere where it was easier? Yeah. But, um, I mean, I did stayed. You look at, do you look at Tennessee's roster? <laughs> Damn, bro. I mean, I'm sitting I'm on the a wrong bitch. decision. Like, Man, I would look good in that. <laughs> <laughs> I would look good in that. Oh, yeah. 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 Right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, uh, no, nah, like, it was... That's crazy. It was like, it was like, like how did I not see that they had all these people already? But it's because I don't follow the sport. Yeah, yeah. Like if you I follow, follow, you didn't follow no, it at I don't, all. No, I don't, no, I don't yeah, watch nothing. sports at all. Yeah, I just started last year though. I'm getting good. Proud of I'm you. Getting good. <laughs> Dude, that that blows my mind. Like I, I think that that's, yeah, brought, that's a beautiful thing though, for right? Sure. Like we've talked about this recently, where it's like you know, as a kid, uh, like when I was a kid. I'm close to you. I'm 35, a couple, couple mm-hmm. years older. Two years. When I was a kid, like, there was no, like, we didn't play video games. There was no iPads. There was nothing. We would just play outside. outside. Yeah. We'd play, uh, we'd play manhunt. We'd play manhunt. Up, yeah. Up for grabs. Just throwing the ball up, seeing who catches it. Five hundred. And then try to Boom. Score. Try to get jackpot. Smear. It's a different name. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, like, we, we'd play all those games. And, and. Nowadays, it's so different, and it's like That's I mean, different. and everyone understands what we're talking about. We don't need, we don't need to dive into that. But what I'm saying though is, that's unbelievable because someone at your stature, your skill in high school, crushing it, like someone would at least be like, "Hey, man, there's a chance to give you this, this, and this." And then it's like all of a sudden you turn your mind on. You're like, "Oh, sweet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this." But that never happened. There was just this random person that we're gonna find. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whoever that, you are, that took whoever, that video. Oh, yeah. that, whoever you are, yeah, whoever you are, yeah, whoever you are, <laughs> we're, yeah, we're gonna find we, you. <laughs> was that a Liam Neeson movie? Yeah. He's like, the next part's very important. <laughs> oh, yeah, take him! Yeah, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're going to take you. Oh, we're man. about to Liam Neeson, but in a in like a peaceful, loving in way. Nice we're gonna way. fly you out. We're, we're gonna, gonna give you lobster. Yeah, yeah. Come on, we'll man. give you lobster. Yeah. Vinny will take care of yeah. you. You ever been to Casa Amigos? <laughs> it's all love. It's all love. Oh man! But you were just playing for the love of the game, and luckily there was someone in in your hometown that filmed you, got got you to the next point. But then still, you're you're just because yeah, you're following yeah. dogs. I mean, absolute <laughs> yeah. dogs man. in there. What what what? Like, Iron was tri- it the strength and conditioning coach that like really helped you not quit, or like what oh, yeah. kept you? Yeah, yeah. him. Um, what was it? Do you know? Do you remember coach? Just name? me. Oh, Scott Cochran. Yeah. Yeah. Shout Scott out, Scott Cochran, monster. Yeah, cold ass coach, <laughs> monster. But um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it just came down to trusting what he was saying, and it's like you you have to face yourself at the end of the day, and it's like if you quit, then like like who are you? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like I would rather literally give my all and then figure out I can't make it versus cutting it short and not knowing. Well, what if I would have gave it that extra year? Right. You know yeah. what I mean. So like the what if was the factor. Yeah. And I mean, thank God. And I didn't want to go back to Louisiana, so it's like, well, <laughs> it made sense. All right, when can. when did it start to click for you? Like when when did you start playing? Was this your sophomore year? So you start getting snaps. So my first year I redshirted. My second year it was still, uh, it was Mark and Trent that did most of it, and then I would get in and blow out games. That's when I would get in yeah. when they were wow. blowing people out, and it's like, yeah. all right, these two guys are gonna rest. All right, Eddie, go. Woo, I get yeah. to play. Oh, I get to play now. Let's go. Don't drop the ball, yeah. you know? And uh, that's when I first got, like, introduced to it my second year. And I was like, oh, I think I can, like, I can do this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's nerve-wracking because the crowd is way huger. That's and they're intense the whole game. Danny Bryant. Yeah. It's Danny Bryant saying, right? Brian Denny. Yeah, or Brian Denny. Yeah, close, okay. Yeah. Reverse. But that yeah. stadium is packed. I mean, that's it's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. So, yeah, and then by the time I third year, my third year came around, Trent was the starter, and then I was behind him, so I got to play, like, a lot more, which got me more acclimated for year four yeah. when I finally got to start. Were Trent and Mark cool with you? Like, were they... Yeah, everybody Everybody was cool with everybody, which was surprising. Cause really? Because cause you guys are fighting for positions, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. But they, they were vibing. You guys were mm-hmm. a team. They, they were helping you out because mm-hmm. they, they were your elders, I guess you yeah. would say. And yep. that's cool. And like, even, even Trent was technically my elder, even though he came in the same year. Yeah. But because he had more playing experience. Because I think, I want to say when I redshirted, he still, I think he played, 
that like that freshman year. Oh, okay. He didn't because even though it was yeah. uh, it was Roy Upchurch and Mark Ingram, Trent like they stubbed him in there a lot, uh, yeah. a little bit here and there too. So I would even consider him like my elder, which look, still to this day, like I still talk to him. Uh, That's dope. You know, he he helped me the whole way, like the That's whole so way. So cool, man. Yeah. And because uh, it could have been opposite, right? It could have, yeah. It, it could have been like, especially you guys coming at the same time. He could have. And yeah. one thing that they said, because um, you know, Mark got drafted uh, first, then Trent got drafted after, and so when Mark got drafted, he came back and he'd be like, "Man, hey." Y'all boys need to enjoy this because, like, when you if you make it to the next level, like nobody is as tight as they are, like how it is in college. Oh wow! And then uh, next year, Trent goes, comes back, says the same exact For thing, real? and they're like, nobody tries to help you because, like, they're 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 drafting you to take somebody's spot. Yeah. So the person whose spot you're taking is not going to help you. It's the under it was the impression that I was under, and that's where the money was involved too. Mm-hmm. So be, everyone's fighting for that. So. Yeah. Pretty much the teams that they were on wasn't helping them. So then when it was like when I went to go get drafted, I'm like, uh oh, I don't know if I should listen to him. I don't know if like you know I'm like you just don't know what to yeah. do. And um, I get drafted by Green Bay. And the running back above me is uh, James Starks. Yeah, which yeah. still to this day, big brother. He literally helped me with everything for real. And I was like, I was like, yo, like, like so, after after we got comfortable and like you know like we became like friends. I was like. Man, when I was in college, like, you know, Morgan Tritt, was like, when you go, like, blah, blah, like, everybody's not as friendly, you know, like, they kind of look out more for themselves than you. Yeah. And it was like, I was like, you, like, different than, like, what I expected. And he was like, man, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I know they brought you in here to, like, take my spot, but the better you do, the longer I can stay. And I was like, damn, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> So it's like he, cause he's like he was older. He's getting up there in age. So it's yeah. like, well, you younger, so you are gonna take the lead. And like the longer, the better you do. The I can more, chill, like, baby. When, you feel me? Like yeah. when you tired, like saying, I got yeah, you. That's your, yeah. yeah, that's your. Wow. And I was like, man. damn. And like that, that show. That's like my first NFL. Like, uh, what is it? Like humility. Like being like humble. Yeah, yeah. Him, yeah, him yeah. showing humility, yeah, like, man. Yeah. And it was like, damn, like. Not everybody, uh, you know, dicks. Granted, you have a huge amount of dicks up there. Because he could, he could have been the opposite though, too. Mm-hmm. You know, he, like he, having that, you know, understanding of, oh yeah, you're taking my place. It could be like immediate, like deceit, like yeah. yo, f you, bro, like you're taking my spot. But like he understood, like yeah. this, this is how it goes, man. That's, and I was, I was shook. Got, I was like, damn. Yeah. And then we hung out the rest of the time. We was there together, like. How long did you play dog. with him for? Uh, with Starks or for Green Bay? With, with Starks. Uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. And then uh, then he retired. And I played one more year there. And then, yeah. I want to I wanna get there. I want to get there. But let's go back to Bama real quick. I'm so weak. You- <laughs> <laughs> so, Yo, no, no, I want to go back, man, because you, then, then – what was it your sophomore year or your after your redshirt year? Was that the first natty you guys won when you were coming in? Uh, no, the first natty we won was redshirt, 2009. My oh, it was a redshirt year. year. Okay, got yeah. you. And then the next year, which was, I guess it would be your freshman year because you redshirted. Right? Yeah, I would you, be a redshirt first, freshman. Yeah, redshirt. Yeah. yeah. Did, mm-hmm. you, you, did you guys win the natty that year too? Nah, we lost. I'm trying to count because I know we lost, we lost five games in four years. And I want to say that year we probably lost two or three. 2010, I think we lost two or That's three crazy. games. Yeah. But uh, we went to a Capital One Bowl. Okay. Uh, Who'd you in play in the Capital One Bowl? Uh, Michigan State. You played yeah. Michigan State. I made a touchdown in there. They put me in at the end because we was already winning by a lot. So I was just supposed to, like, you know, go in, run the clock Ice out. the game, baby. Yeah. And, like, they gave me the ball. And, like, it was a huge-ass gap. Like, literally, like, <laughs> just untouched. And so I ran. And, like, I'm happy. Like, I made a touchdown. And then, like, you look to the sideline, and then Saban is, like, pissed. pissed. Yeah. Because, like, because it, it looks like we're running the score yeah. up. Yeah. And it's, like, so, like, he's like he's happy for yeah. me because, like, you know, I'm young. I'm you getting, like, job. you know, yeah. yeah. And I was, like, untouched. But then it's, like, he looks like he's running the score up on a team who, like, clearly badly beaten. So I was, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait till after the game. I'll, I'll wait till after the game. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to the my friends about this later. Yeah. <laughs> after, so after the Capital One Bowl that next year, were you a starter? Uh, 
year three. No, I was behind Mark. I mean, sorry, not Mark, Trent. Trent, okay, gotcha. And you. Yeah. Uh, we won a national championship that year. We lost to So you were the two LSU. back. You were the two back with him. Mm-hmm. So you Trent you were still getting you were still getting snaps during Yeah, year three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't you were I was coming in normal in, rotation. You were coming at the end of the year, yeah, you were yeah, in rotation. I was in normal rotation. Yeah. yeah. And then year four, we won again. It was, and was you and TJ Yeldon? Yep, TJ Yeldon, yeah, TJ yeah, Yeldon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah. right. TJ Yeldon and Kenyon Drake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That so was, it was it was a bunch of What us. was that like? What was that like, man? Like the, I I've been to a couple Bama games. I used to date a girl from Bama. And roll Tide. Roll Tide. <laughs> roll tide baby. <laughs> I told you that story how I went on the JT and I went on the field at like 2 a.m. one night when we were there, we snuck, we uh, no. we climbed over the fence. I, I can't get in trouble for the. I think no. it's seven no, years. No, 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 we're good. Right? Statue of Liberty. Yeah, you'll pull the, the tape. We're good. <laughs> get out of here. I think we're good, right? Yeah. We're good. <laughs> we uh, we had ourselves a day at the game. We <laughs> snuck. We snuck onto the field when we walked into the stadium. We uh, like for the game actually. The, like before I tell the the next part. Before before the game, we walk in the stadium and we see all the uh, not the cheerleaders, but like the baton girls. You know what I'm talking about? Like they like twirl uh, the baton. Part of the band, oh, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, sorry, respect to all. They're high. Uh, I don't know they're big time there. I'm pretty sure that's like a yeah, big deal. Is there a name for them? I just call them baton like girls. I feel bad. Like I'm being disrespectful. Obviously, I mean they throw batons. Well, run <laughs> yeah, baton people. Uh, the baton girls. We we saw them at the beginning <laughs> of the game. I think obviously JT. You know. Built some rapport with one of these girls, of course. and we ended up. They were right. in in the tunnel. <laughs> you walk in, the tunnel was kind of part of the the walkway around, like where the bars are. And we just walked onto the field with them, and then just made our way on the sideline. And we just looked up, and that was my first time growing up in Boston, college football, Boston not, Boston yeah. College, like yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. respect Boston College, but nothing compared no, to the to, yeah. to the actual SEC actual football. league. Yeah, yeah. SEC football, <laughs> SEC yeah. football, man. Yeah, and so we walked it's, it's out. A little, oh. Different. Yeah, so I walked down there. I'm like, dude, this is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this before. And uh, but then later that night, we were like, man, let's go back there. Let's sneak in the stadium. JT was like, yo, we can just probably jump over the gate. Yeah, we're climbed good. over. Yeah, we climb the gate Sheesh, at the entrance, and then we it's get ballsy. in there, <laughs> and we're at we're at the center of the field, and we're looking around the stadium. We're like, oh, those were our seats up there. And then JT's like, I got some change in my pocket. I was like, let's do a coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> Out of everything you could do, you decided to do a coin toss? And then Eddie Lacey out of nowhere just comes and <laughs> lays you guys out. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't, like, what the hell? You, guys really, no, you could have pretend to run You could have done anything. You guys just said, let's get in the middle. Let's flip a coin and see who's going to go hit well, receiver no, I, I, or I, I, kick first. I mean, if you let me, <laughs> let me finish. I mean, Come on. Fucking Kanye that podcast over here. Damn, bro. That was shocking. So, JT has a hand. Back in the day, you have change oh, yeah. in your pockets. Take the handful of change. I throw it in the air. I'm like, heads. And then the next day, I was like, man, like the, the guy mowing the lawn is going to hate me. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. But then, then to, uh, to help respect Thank your you. comment, we went down to the 10 yard line. JT played quarterback. I pretended like I was running around. I scored a <laughs> touchdown. And then I was, I was so drunk. I jumped up on the goalposts, and, but I wasn't. My ups weren't that good, so I hit the goalpost with my hands. My body just went sideways in the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground, I jumped. That would have been a sight to see. Yeah. That would have been a sight to see. Yeah. I'm surprised st- you didn't take a piss on the field, to be honest with you. Like, just because, not, not out of disrespect, but just because you had to pee. I haven't checked how many years it's been, so I didn't want to go too far into the story. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, so I, to- I knew it. I knew it. Great so, call. So, <laughs> senior, senior year. Let's go see. Senior year now. Okay. Uh, you're still. Are you, are you still two back there? No, no he's one. Well, he's still two one back, now. but I'm yeah. starting. You're TJ. starting now. Damn, bro. What was that yeah. like? Yeah, being the starting running back at Alabama. I mean, you, uh, any I pressure you. at this point? Because you're up until this point, you're just having fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm still having fun. Yeah. But uh, um, funny story, real short story. Uh, my dad has a favorite team. And his favorite team is uh, the Michigan Wolverines. Uh oh. Yeah, he lo- he loves the Wolverines. <laughs> yeah. And game one, we play Wolverines, right? <laughs> yeah. And so we're talking, and he's like, he's like, son, 
I Thank love you. you, and I want you to have a good game, but I hope y'all lose. <laughs> what? That's I'm true like, fandom. I'm like, you know what? Like, I respect it because, like, he uh, his mom's from Detroit, so like, oh, they okay, all they yeah. all from Michigan, you know. So, well, he's not from Michigan, but his mom is. But he was like, yeah. he he was brought up there for a little while before moving back to the country, New Orleans. But I was like, what, what kind of reverse compliment is that? But I respect that. Hey, your team. I respect team. that too. You yeah. Yeah. At least you told me have a good game. Yeah. At the end of the day. But um. Being able to start, honestly, it was at that point in time, you're you're already conditioned in a sense to where it is what it is. Like it's no different than being second string or coming off like because it's coming in because somebody's hurt. Yeah. Um, it was more of a all right, now all right, it's your turn. You're up. Go do what we know you're capable of doing and uh like if you don't, you know, hold up to what we think you're gonna do. Then there's someone else behind, behind you. you. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, you know, like to to nail that point in. Like honestly, um, going into that year, I had just had my toe surgery. I have two screws in my big toe. Oh damn! Fire. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so my first two games wasn't that good. They weren't bad. Yeah. But it wasn't like what I'm capable of doing, and it's. Mostly because I'm trying to still get used to walking because, like, my toe don't bend, so it just sticks in the air. So it's, it's kind of – I had to, like, relearn how to kind of walk without, you know, having this for stability and all of that. That's crazy. Your feet so, is your uh, whole game, bro. Literally. Like, that's <laughs> how you do everything. It's like trying to play a fucking video game that's without your thumb. thumb that's you know? not yeah. impossible. Yeah, it's, you can't do it. Yeah, you're, yeah. Just, like, <laughs> you're trying to use this part. Like, yeah. Can't stick on that. Like, <laughs> but – um. So I think I can't remember which game it was, but I mean which uh like after which game it was, but um I remember Saban called me up to his office and he was like uh he was like we like I'm not I'm letting you start, but like you're starting because you know, because of seniority. Yeah. And he was like, But you know, TJ is outperforming you right now. Like if any if something doesn't change, then you know, he's gonna switch it. You know, I'll be back up again. And, like, to this day, I don't know if that was, like, a scare tactic or if he was, like, dead ass, yeah. no clue. But whatever it was, it worked. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, <laughs> turn the yeah. shit up and it's time to go. Yeah, yeah it and, lit that fire. And it's like, yeah. and it's, but it's scary, though, because you don't know if he's serious or not. You have no clue because he, like, his mannerisms are his mannerisms. He's always serious. So you know what I mean? There's no tell in when he's kidding and when he, it's, it's all the same. <laughs> like That's what I'm curious. So, like, your relationship with them, even before that conversation, like, are you guys cool? Like, yo, what's up? Like, do you call him I mean, Nick? I think do, you call, do you call him Nick? Do you call him Coach Saban? Coach. Yeah, oh, coach. Coach. You, you call everybody Coach. You do not call him hey, Nick. Yeah, <laughs> nah. I mean, if I was on the team, I'd be like, yo, Nico. <laughs> no, you would not. Put you, me would, you, you would not do that. You would, you would like like that. not do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, but I'm, I, a, I'm a hard hard headed dude. Yeah, You've been running really. all day, bro. Yeah. Hey, that's, <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. That's that's why I'm sitting over here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like at that point, like at that time when I was in college, like the way he is now, uh, because of how kids are now, he I don't I wouldn't say he's not allowed because I mean technically you do what you want, but I think for kids uh, attitude purposes. Uh, he doesn't coach the way yeah, now. You gotta, it's ba- hard. You gotta it's baby hard. them. You gotta baby them. Like, yeah, kids, because uh, like kids now are entitled and they're soft. Well, so soft. So like, and you can tell the difference because like back then, like you will get, he will curse, he will curse you clean out with no, like no remorse, like none. You, you, like, yes, he will, like as if yeah. he's like your legit father. Like he will curse you out. Like the only thing he can't do is beat your ass clearly because he's smaller in stature. You know, <laughs> like he will, he will cuss you out, and it's like. He has like such a pre- he has a presence as if he's like like fucking Xerxes from Three Hundred. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's like his presence. His presence is Xerxes. <laughs> that- a fucking Leonidas. Yeah. Hey, pick either one of them. Yeah. Like, that's his presence inside of his like inside of his like little inside of his body. That Xerxes is like, best because Xerxes is a little guy, like a little skinny guy. You're just like man, damn, man. bro. But uh, <laughs> but like back then, like it was like he barely smiled. Like if you got him to smile, like shout yeah. out to you. It's a big thing. And so shout out to me because I did it twice. That, my boy, uh, yeah, yeah. I did it. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. Somehow you see this, you know, I, I did that. Yeah. I, made, I made him laugh twice. Do you, do you remember when? And what, what, what? Uh, it was it was literally it was before practice. We was in stretching lines. Uh, we was in stretching lines, like getting ready to pretty much start running before practice and all of that. But uh, yeah, I made him laugh twice. But um, yeah, that's my saving story. I made you laugh twice. <laughs> twice. Twice. Take me to this, dude. Draft day. 
What was or that even like before draft day, like your combine and stuff? Like, yeah, the process. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do combine. Really? Like, Wait, went, for real? Yeah, because I had a um, I have a torn pectoral. I tore that my second year of college. So for the combine, I couldn't bench press and I couldn't run mm-hmm. because of my hamstrings. So I couldn't do nothing. I was just there. But um, like I went to it. I think it was in like India or something like that. I don't know. But like I went yeah. to it and like I got to see it and stuff like that. Me personally, I think it's pointless. Um, it's like. For one, like you know who you want, you know who you're interested in, you have game film to see if this right. is somebody you yeah, want. Yeah, you already proved yourself on the there's, field. There's nothing this fucking shuttle drill is about to do that the film is not that that the film hasn't already showed you. Yep. And me, per, like the forty time, like there's not going to be one point in time where somebody has to run a four one forty in a football game. Because, like, the odds of that happening is slim to none. Like, if you break a kickoff return, cool. You're still not going to get to that 4-1 point because you can't just take off full speed. You have to, like, anyways, I just think all that shit is pointless. Yeah. Uh, you want what you see on tape. You don't want what you see in drills. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I just think it's. Yeah, when the lights are on but, and the helmets yeah. are on, it's but a you're, But when I'm, I agree. I couldn't agree more. I mean, people see the game tape, it, that's. That's the truth. Yeah, like More the reason why else. you're yeah. here is because of what you seen on tape. Yep. Like yeah. you didn't see me practice, and it was like, oh my god, did you see how you did that back? <laughs> <laughs> we need him. <laughs> did, you, did you just see how he? Did you see that move once he hit the cone and turned left? <laughs> like no, like there's nothing out there that's, that's showing you that you need me on your team. Like no, you were drafted by Green, Green Bay. Bay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And. Your first year there, you were playing. Yeah. What's it like, though, first going from Alabama, so Louisiana to Alabama? So, in to, Wisconsin. To Wisconsin, Green, Green Bay, Wisconsin. The, uh, yeah. What was your hoodie Native game like? Man. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was September, maybe October, maybe October, and I'm freezing, right? I'm already cold. Right. Yeah. I'm already cold. And I like to be cold, but like it, that's a different kind of cold. Like that's that's them over there cold. Like, you know, like <laughs> real cold. Yeah, that's like cheese it's cold, insane. Bro. Like because of me being up there, like I can do every other winter without without no sleeves and like pants on. Like it's cool. Like I can go outside in the winter in Arizona like this. And it's like, you're not cold. No, I'm cool, bro. I lived in Wisconsin for four years. <laughs> but um Got like I was flag. freezing in like late September, early October, and um the receiver <laughs> was James Jones, and he was like James Jones, he looked yeah. and he like, he was like, he was like, you all right? And I'm like, man, I'm cold. So and he literally jaw, looks at the me. jaws clapping. You're yeah. like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm cold. He's like, man, you ain't seen nothing yet. And then walked off. I'm like, wait, what's that supposed to mean? Like, I've never been fine before, but I got my first fine ever because I don't know how to drive in snow. My four wheel drive on my car didn't work. I'm getting passed out by these little ass cars. I had a Range Rover. <laughs> And so I was late for practice. I mean, for meetings. I wasn't late for practice. I was late for meetings. Yeah. And I was like, you know, like after the meeting or whatever, they was like, why are you late, blah, blah. And I was like, I didn't know how to drive in the snow. Like, I was scared. (laughs) That's reasonable. And it was like, (laughs) uh, wake up earlier. (laughs) It's like, what? you want a headline Eddie Lacy class? I could have slid. I had to learn about black ice. What the fuck is black yeah. ice? Like, I don't I'm, know none I'm, of this shit. Y'all ain't, to, yeah. y'all ain't give us a pamphlet of like, yeah. hey. Like a train Around guy. this time, yeah. I need y'all to wake up about 5 a.m. to make it to 8 a.m. meetings. They even like, think about that. They even think about the fact that you grew up with crawfish in the road, not snow. And not snow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, like, and that's bro, the most dangerous thing to drive it. Legitly. That's scary. Like, it's, yeah, it's like, no joke. Not at all. But my favorite thing about being in the winter, uh, my rookie year, is uh, let's say we played a team that's coming from like a, a hotter climate. Or we're playing a cold team, but they're like an indoor cold team, so they're not used to playing outside. Uh, but let's just stay for like uh, southern teams for this. Uh, we was playing Miami, but we was playing them like up. And he'll be like, we're playing a team from the south. They're not used to this kind of weather. I'm like, uh, <laughs> that's, that's me. I'm, I'm from Louisiana, and I came from Alabama. I'm right from where they at right now. I'm not used to this either, my dog. I am not. I'm, I'm going to be cold just like them. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm like, that, that did not make no sense to me. Don't wear sleeves. We have to be. In, we have to intimidate them. Did they actually say that too? You're not allowed. To, you, that, you, that's why now well, you wear in sleeves a, as ever. As a skill position, no, I never wore sleeves. No, yeah. which it was miserable. Yeah. Well, yeah, that <laughs> hurts when you but, fall too. When it's freezing yeah, cold, bro. Everything and it it's lingers like because it's so cold. Yeah. yeah. Stinger but, uh, after stinger. 
Yeah, like the the sleeves are like make the ball because the ball Slip. is like yeah. frozen too, so like it's easier to like slide up. <laughs> Everything's frozen. Everything. <laughs> the sideline it feels like Miami summer, and then you cross into the field. They got and the you're right heavy. back in Antarctica. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. No, thank you. What was it? What was it like playing with Rogers? Uh, it was it was dope and scary at the same time. And because what year did you get drafted? 2013. 2013. Okay, yep. so yeah, so Rogers has been around for a while. Yeah, that's why I made the Pro Bowl because uh, he ended up get, he ended up having a collarbone injury, and we didn't have a backup quarterback. So all we did was run the ball. We went through like eight different quarterbacks that year, by the way, trying to figure out who would be like second string yeah. before bringing in Matt Flynn. Which, was Matt even Flynn? though you went to Matt LSU, Flynn. hey, Matt Flynn, my dog, too. I like, I like, <laughs> oh, I like Flynn. <laughs> Flynn, my dog. He was cool as hell, man. But, uh, yeah, so he got hurt. So all we did was run the ball. And so that's why I was able to make the Pro Bowl. Yeah. But um, it was it was cool and scary at the same time because it's like – I'm a I'm a rookie like I like I like I play with you on Madden type thing you know what yeah, I mean like really? we drop, we drop dimes on him you know yeah. and then like you've seen it in real life and he's just so like nonchalant on the field because he knows he's that guy and so it's like Take you want to fan out over it but at the same time as your teammate and you don't want to make him mad because he will get on you you know what I mean yeah so it's like you like you happy but you kind of like uh, but like you were perfo- you were performing though. Oh so yeah, he, I did. I did good. Yeah, but I, he I, held, I held my so, composure so quite you guys well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I held my composure so quite guys, well. Yeah. Did you guys become like friends, like homie? Like he so, must have had a I lot of respect homies. for you. I wouldn't say homies, but yeah. uh, he didn't really hang out much in public. Like he wasn't like an out in public kind of guy. I think one time we hung out um, at a. A Bucks game was it maybe? It was either a Bucks or a Brewers game. Uh, he came out to the suite and like hung out for a little bit. Um, oh, actually, new memory. He let me and Bakhtiari uh, fly with him on his private jet to because uh, we was going to Montreal and he was going somewhere else, but they stopped in Montreal. Yeah. So he allowed us to ride with him on his like private jet. On the to jet. Montreal. Yeah, he was <laughs> he like, back. Just, for me, he's like, just, just <laughs> find a way back. And me and Bakhtiari were rookies, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was cool. I was like, man, I'm on a private jet with A-Rod. Like, <laughs> I'm going to tell my mom and them. Yes. Like, yo, yeah. like, yo, yo, you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> like, yeah. First time on a private jet. Yeah. They're hella scary. Uh, cause you feel all the turbulence. Oh, like, yeah. 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 So I wasn't a fan of that part. <laughs> no, everything else was cool. That's crazy. That's crazy. Was it culture shock though too? Going though from you've been you spent all your time in the south to then go up to Wisconsin. Like was that culture shock or you was it was, uh, it was it was ball all day still? Well, it was a it it is a culture shock, but at the same time, it's. It's not really enough around there for you to really like care about it, you know. I mean, I shouldn't say care about it. that. Yeah. Sounded bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel but like, but it's like because it, like a stadium is in the middle of a neighborhood. Outside of that stadium, like you know, people are going to work. They they're, they're minding their own business. Yeah. The only time anybody is together is when there's a football Sunday. game. Sunday. Yeah. And I feel and, like then too, Southern hospitality, Midwest hospitality is like everybody's very nice. Yeah. They're, oh yeah, yeah, man, my neighbor. That's true. Oh my god, I wish I could remember her name. A uh, sweet old lady. It was her, her and her husband, and they adopted two kids. And um, uh, every Monday, she would um, either she would come next door, and uh, so her husband would bake these cookies, like these little I don't know what they I don't know what kind of cookies they was, but they were fired. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like he would make something, he would like bring it to the house. Well, she would bring it. Or she was sending one of the kids to bring it, along with like a newspaper clipping of like whatever uh, part of like me was in it. No oh, way! So and they cool. would do it like every Monday, and like she was the sweetest. Like whenever I would like leave to go like out of like leave Green Bay for like off season, yeah. like she would have a key to my house to like check on it to make really? sure. Like, yeah. Oh, that's awesome! Like she was the sweetest lady, man. I wish I could remember her name. That's cool. shout out to you. Shout out! Shout you lived, out! You lived on uh, Ridgeway. Ridgeway. She probably like still that. lives there too. She probably, probably forever. Probably. Ridgeway Drive. That's awesome. The Pier, Wisconsin. There you go. <laughs> right by the prison. We live right by the prison. Bro. Really? Big ass prison. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, aren't you just surrounded too by the fields? Like it's like little little Green Bay, and then it's just. Well, we we were surrounded by like a lake. Like oh, we was even we was colder like than. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like when it freezes, they'd be like, 
you want to go like do some? I don't know what they the ice stuff. Ice on fishing. Them. Yeah, well, I'm like, nah, I'm cool. I'm like, but well, we don't even get in regular water if we can't stand up in it. I'm not finna get on ice water, like. Nah, yeah, that's that. awesome. Good on that. So then, when you and in the off season, would you go back to Louisiana? Oh yeah, yeah. first flight out. <laughs> oh, for first real? flight, first flight, which will make you like it'll make me upset because like after the end of the season, you have like these exit meetings, and it goes by like seniority. And because yeah. I was a rookie, I would be like last. So like everybody gets like the older guys get to leave day one. Then like I was probably like day day three, maybe day four. So I had to stay there an extra few days before I could. What was an exit meeting? Uh, You pretty much go talk to the head coach. He tells you how good you did or how good you didn't do, what you can improve on, and kind of give you a hint on if you're going to be there the next year. (laughs) (laughs) If you're, like, not under contract or, like, if you're going into an open contract. Yeah. It's kind of an evaluation on, like, all right, I need to get my together for next year. Yeah. Or there's a high possibility I might not be here next year. Oh, wow. Yeah. After the first – did you have a – when you got drafted and you signed, was that a one-year contract? Oh, no, four. It was a four-year contract. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so after – So I never had the whole, like, I wonder if I'll be here next year thing. I never had that. Yeah. Well, and you also played really well. I mean, you made, yeah, you yeah, made, so the, like, you made the Pro to, Bowl, so you yeah. – I got to I got to skip that part. Yeah. That's dope, dude. So yep. you were – did you play all four years there the, the, the contract? Yeah, except for my last year because I got hurt. You got hurt? Injury, surgery. What what was the what was the injury? Ankle. Oh okay, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I had a high ankle sprain, and then I played on it, and then I heard it against the Cowboys. I jumped over some dude and landed on my left link, my hurt ankle instead of the other ankle. Yeah. And when I landed on it, it pretty much just snapped it, and then uh, I went, had to get surgery. You went to Seattle after that, didn't you? Mm. Mm-hmm. How was yeah. that? Uh, beautiful city. The players was cool. Honestly, I kind of thought I was kind of nervous going there because uh, because of like the the reputation that defense had, you know. Yeah. Like, that was like the Legion of Boom, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. they were rowdy, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm the complete opposite of that. Just, we finna go to practice. Like, what if they tried it? I'm not trying to get hit at practice, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. and I'm not trying to <laughs> hit thumping. y'all at practice. Yeah, you know, like just wait. Like, was Sherman on that team? Yeah, Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Cam Chancellor, uh, scariest man. Cam yeah. Chancellor, yeah. Earl Tom, yeah. he's Earl. by. He's by far the, the hardest hit I've ever taken. Earl in my Thomas, life. for nah, real. Cam oh, Cam Chancellor. Chancellor. in I mean, practice? Big. No, no, no. And it, when we played each other, oh, you we played against each other. Okay, yeah. okay. I was like, damn, and bro. So, uh, like, <laughs> damn, they were the legion of doom. Damn, when bro. I got there, no respect to practice. When I got there, the first two people I talked to was Cam and Earl, and I was like, yo, like, I'm so glad, like, we're on the same team, so I don't have to get hit by y'all no more. And it was like, uh, basically, like, I'm glad that I don't have to tackle you no more. Because, like, we both had, like, mutual yeah, feelings about, yeah. like, yeah. having to hit it. Because, like, that shit suck. Like, it hurts every time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I was, like, I was I didn't know, like, what to expect, like, going join a team. And you were coming off a big injury, though, too, Yeah, right? yeah and I'm surgery. coming off an injury, yeah. yep. But, uh, they honestly, they actually ended up being, like, nice guys. <laughs> like, oh, like contrary to, like, TV, you know, yeah. like, and how they present them. Yeah. Not present themselves, but, like, the, the the demeanor that defense had. Like, their, their swag, I guess you can call it. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, like, cool was Pete dudes. Was Pete Carroll the coach? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right, he's a player, so he cool. he he's cool. a player coach, right? He's a player. Yeah. 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 Cool as a yeah. fan. Yeah. I'm, from, I'm from Boston, so I love Pete Carroll. He coached Patriots for a little while. Yeah, he cool as a fan, man. Yeah. So, after... After you left Seattle, you retired. Yeah, I came out here, actually. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, so, no, so how'd you? Yeah, yeah, yeah go, so, go. Uh, all right, so uh, I finished my last game. And, like, after at, at the end of every season, I always go straight to Louisiana first. Like, that's my home base. That's my reset. I always go back home. Land of moms. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a bed yeah. with them. You know, my mom and my dad. Like, that's what I'm, I'm That's amazing, chilling. man. Watching Star Trek and Sanford and so with my dad. Star Trek? You like Star Trek? No, my dad likes oh, Star Trek. Yeah, he's a he's a what he's a Trekkie. Trekkie. Trek, 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 yeah, yeah, Trek. He's a to this day he's a Trekkie. <laughs> yeah, that's his that's his jam. But I will watch Sanford and Son with him all day. Yeah. So, what's life like outside of football now? Uh, how can I make this story very very short? This is another long story, by the way. But uh, sit back. Do we got time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we? Yeah. yeah. But uh, nah. Um, it was the beginning stages was was very very difficult because um, you go from like doing one thing from like six years old, yeah, all the way until twenty eight. 
you've done one thing your whole entire life. You've never had to do anything outside of this bubble. The only thing that changed was like the size of the bubble, you know? Yeah. But you're still inside of it. And then to try to figure out life outside of that bubble, because like once you're out of it, nothing no, nothing inside of this bubble cares about you once you're outside of that bubble. Like yeah. you're pretty much like in the world now. And I don't want to say like you lack skills, but like you literally don't know how to live in an outside world. Like, yeah. For example, like when something happened to my house, I can't remember what happened in my house, and I didn't know what to do. I'm like, hey, dad, like this and this and this is going on. Like, I don't know what to do. And he's like, son, just X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, shit, it was that simple? But like, we, like I don't know that because if something goes on, like, yeah. there's somebody somewhere to fix it. I don't have to worry about that problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, the transition was very difficult because now you're trying to find your bearings, and, but you don't know where they are. And you have to take everything a day at a time. And I think the I think the the most difficult part that I had to deal with personally was um I had like I had like thirty years old, thirty, thirty one years old, and um <clears throat> I realized that like I was like, I'm like a thirty one year old guy and I don't know shit about what's going on, like as far as like what I can and can't do. I don't know what I'm good at. Yeah. I don't even know like where to start to figure out something that I'm good at. I have no clue. Part of the reason why we ended up here right now is there was one night we actually were here in the the office at Demon and you told me, man, you were like, "Yo, like I'm I'm open to talking about my story where I went from playing football, you know, reaching the the highest capabilities of my profession and now I'm I'm in a place where, like, I, I don't know where I am, and I'm struggling. Yep, we did talk and, about yeah. that before I left. And then yeah. we, we talked about, we, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, I, I kind of love the f-ing Eddie Lacey podcast. Yeah, you're, you're I You're a like legend, that bro. Eddie Your Lacey name podcast. is a legend. <laughs> but that, but I think we can, we, can, we can continue that message and pass that on faster with using your uh, Eddie Lacey, bro, because you're I mean, you're like, legend, we were at bro. the bar tonight, and people came up to him, and were like, is that Eddie? Uh, this that guy, was dope, man. This guy yeah. comes up to me, he's like, are you Eddie Lacey? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, really, bro, nice to meet you. I was like, do I look like a Oh my back. god, really? I was like, it's a him. And he's like, oh, fuck. Let's be honest, no one said that to him. He's, <laughs> no, okay, he's, he's okay. This okay. kid was hammered and had no idea who the f- like. He didn't know. That's you were like, crazy. Hey. he just knew he, like, you went to Bama. They pushed me the f out of the way. They said, yo, move. Like, oh, no. Zach, Zach was like, yo. And I was like, do I look like a running back, bro? And the guy was like, yeah. And I was like, you're as dumb as f- I was like, that's like that wasted, wasted as hell. Yeah, kid was hammered. No, but was man, like, I, that's, the, that's the thing. Not I think even. there's something beautiful though about talk because I'm actually I'm I'm uh, I'm going to Maine next month to play a show for uh, an organization called Maine Boys to Men. Which, oh, you talked about that too. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was telling you about that, and it's it's all about breaking down uh, negative masculinity with men and and stopping men from causing harm and and committing suicide mm-hmm. because we are conditioned as kids to be this as a as a boy to be this strong like you're supposed to take care of the family you're supposed to do this and no one tells it's no one tells us it's okay to cry it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to struggle and it's a beautiful like thing even my, my mom like growing up sometimes she'd be like well when i was in i think i was in high school or college one or two she was trying she was trying to get me to like it's okay to like cry she was like if you have to cry uh, just go in the shower, cry in the shower. You can get yeah. out eyes red. You just got soap in your eyes. You know, That's like beautiful. you can make up. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. she was trying to figure yeah. it, like find That's a way beautiful. because yeah. Yo, can we get your mom? We we need to start your I'm podcast. So- <laughs> we got to get your mom Thanks. on your yeah. podcast because uh, she guess, literally. Yeah. It sounds like she is the backbone of of who you are today. Which I'll be honest, man. JT, my mom, my dad, my brother Scotty, like those four people in my life are the reason why I am the person I am today. And it sounds like your mom and, and even your brothers and sisters are the and reason you are today. Yeah. And I think that's important for people to hear because people look up to you, bro. As much as you don't want to recognize it, as much as you, you don't want to take recognition for it, like you did some legendary shit, bro, and I love it. And I just want to help keep your legacy grow. That's all I want to do because I love you as a human being. I think you have such a good heart. I'm also really drunk, so I'm going to add the podcast I here right now. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Lobster and Beer TV. We love you. Peace. Peace. I just want to let you know we appreciate you guys so much. Our fan base means everything to us. So if you can, hit the like button. Subscribe right here. 
And hit us up on Instagram, socials, everything. Lobster and Beer TV. We love you. We will see you on the next episode. Peace.